he's telling you the most absurd thing that you've ever heard and it's just deadpan you know straightforward here's what happened and here's what i was thinking you know <laughs> it's yeah. like your jaws on the floor constantly Now, this documentary was so much fun. I couldn't believe that I personally had like not heard the story of Gerald Blanchard before. Where did you first hear it? <laughs> I'm always amazed by that, too. I mean, it's I think that's kind of one of the, you know, I, I just keep saying this. I mean, it's such a gift for me, you know, to come across a story like this that's not much better known. Um, you know, I, I saw an article that really just caught my attention about, um, you know, this kind of impossible theft at a castle in Austria and, you know, stealing these crown jewels and this very kind of Ocean's Eleven-esque cat burglar kind of, you know, image of this real man. Um, but I think that it's really, you know, that, that intrigued me, of course, but I think when I just started kind of getting into the layers and, and everything else that just made up this decades long criminal career and crime spree and you know each escapade kind of wilder than the last and just kind of building to this dramatic conclusion and everything else i mean it was just yeah i felt the same way it's like how have i not heard about this how is this guy not you know the star of some you know, like, I've not been made about this man so i just feel extremely fortunate that i was able to put the you know the planets aligned and i could put the pieces together to, to get it out there yeah, I mean, it's so cinematic. I loved watching the firsthand experience of it with Gerald talking about it himself. How dedicated were you to getting him involved? Was there the jewel thief at all if he wasn't involved? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, that, obviously, that was just such a huge, like, you know, you hear these stories and they're kind of like, I don't know, maybe they're 100 years old or something, but he's not an old man, you know? I mean, this is a very contemporary story. He has these videos from, you know, this kind of 80s or 90s world that that looks very familiar still, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, he was absolutely, he was my first call. And I, I think, you know, initially, you know, there was so much interest in his story that it was really kind of hard for me to get my foot in the door and, and compete <laughs> with the likes of Oprah and Warner Brothers and Zac Efron and, and whoever else. But, um, you know, really once I had that opening, I mean, he didn't take a lot of convincing personally, <laughs> as you might imagine. <laughs> so um, I was going to say, what was that conversation like? Because I imagine he was like, I'm in. I want to talk about this. <laughs> was. I mean, he's such a, you know, by the time I met him personally, you know, I'd had so much time to just build him up in my mind. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was so intimidated to finally be sitting face to face with this guy that was a celebrity in my mind at that point, you know. Um, and he just couldn't have been more, you know, nonplussed <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, he recounts these stories like they're really no big deal at all but it's the craziest stuff i've ever heard <laughs> well, absolutely and, and it's hard not to find the humor in that and kind of laugh about it but it is just like he's telling you the most absurd thing that you've ever heard and it's just deadpan you know straightforward here's what happened and here's what i was thinking you know <laughs> and yeah. it's like your jaws on the floor constantly i mean yeah it's bewildering what was it like to work with him throughout this project? I mean, what was your relationship like and how did you get to know him by the end? Um, well, I would, you know, I'd say we've gotten to know each other fairly well, certainly spent a lot of time together, a lot of time on the phone and more or less daily at this point. Um, but, you know, he's, he's just always been, been very, very polite and very straightforward with me. And I think, you know, a lot of, people say that, including police and others that have, you know, that he's, he's very disarming, you know, in that he is just very, you know, yeah, he's, he seems very down to earth. I mean, he's, he's obviously a little peculiar in a lot of ways, but um, always just very nice, very straightforward, seemingly very honest and upfront yeah. about everything. Um, but I think he's, you know, he's like anybody would be, he's very concerned about how he's portrayed and, and what stories are being told, but, but eager to tell them. Now, when you said seemingly very honest, I uh, perked up a little bit because there are a few moments in the doc where we see that maybe he's not being 100 percent true blue. How much do you, you know, when talking to him, take with a grain of salt and how much are you like, no, nah, I think he's, he's uh, pretty much a man of his word. I have to say that's evolved over time. You know, I think, you know, I obviously knew from the beginning that I was dealing with a con man and, yeah. and someone who has a vested interest in a certain version of, of stories and a certain version of events and somebody who 
I think is kind of eager to to lionize himself and to sort of foster a bit of a you know criminal mastermind, sort of a larger than life mythological figure um, that I I think he really wants to live up to. Um, but I have to say that as I got deeper into this, you know, so many of the stories that I thought were, I mean, excuse my French, but just yeah. complete bull. You know, yeah. very mm-hmm. hard to believe outlandish stories. You know, weeks later, I'd be sitting in front of a police officer, you know, and they'd be saying, no, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> I don't know where he got this idea about that detail. Like, that's not true. But like, yes, he, you know, stole my car, handcuffed, you know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> It's just shocking to me that the most outlandish things are almost across the board, you know, undeniably true. Yeah, it is wild. I feel like the the little white lies are truly just these tiny little details in this much wilder story. What do, what do you make of that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's hard for me to say whether he's misremembering these things. If mm. they're like, I think we all have these moments in our life that we, you know, look back on and embellish and some stories that we've told over and over that kind of get a little better each time we tell them. (laughs) I mean, there might be a a kernel of that. I mean, I'm sure that there's truth to that. Um, But I think that he, you know, I just think the most fascinating or interesting thing for me is really just, again, you know, this is a story that spans decades. This is really, I mean, this is a life story in a lot of ways. Um, and well, you know, you know, while there might have been some economic driver very early on, you know, I think what he was doing, you know, very quickly outpaced that and was clearly not about the money, you know, very quickly and just trying to unravel really what was driving him and really what he was after was was really a lot of what, um, you know, kept me so engaged in the filmmaking process and trying to understand that and I think at the end of the day, you know, I really kind of came to believe that so much of it was about gaining that respect and that recognition, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that desire, you know, to be recognized for being so good at what he was doing was was very strong. And I think that he, you know, he wants that that level of recognition. He wants that notoriety, you know, that that's a huge driver for him, I think. Um, So, you know, in all of those ways, I think it's easy to see why he'd tell these stories to make maybe be a little bit more heroic, a little bit more glamorous <laughs> than they were in real life. Yeah. Well, and it also seems like he feels very cinematically about his own life. I mean, there are references to MacGyver, James Bond, all of these big <laughs> names that are thrown out there. Do you think that's how he sees his own life and his own adventures? He says, no, I was always sort of trying to get him to talk about that a little mm-hmm. bit. I mean, I don't really know. I mean, it's, you know, all these tabloid stories. I mean, there's immediately people are talking about Ocean's Eleven and, yeah. you know, Italian job and catch me if you can. And it's like, it's hard not to see these dramatic parallels with these, you know, just very famous heist stories over and over again. But I asked him at one point, you know, like, what was your favorite movie? Or was there somebody that you were kind of emulating or that you liked as a kid, blah, blah, blah. And he thought about, I mean, after saying no about a dozen times, and I'm kind of like, you know, come on, think about it for a second. He thought about it, and he said, yes, yeah, Scarface. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I reacted. I'm like, oh. Well, yeah, that makes sense too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's obviously so sharp, so creative, really, really kind of a genius. Do you view him as this criminal mastermind that he's being written as in the, the tabloids and in these articles? I think that there's, <laughs> you know, I, I obviously have complex ideas about that and, and complex relationships to a lot of this, these stories and things, but I think that he very clearly has some almost savant-like abilities, you know, that made him capable of doing these things. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that he, you know, I think he had a lot of struggles in his life that, you know, the the trajectory that his life took are, are really in response to, you know, but he very obviously found something that he was very good at mm-hmm. um, and something that could win, you know, respect of his peers. And, um, you know, he, he kind of went full bore in that direction for better or worse, you know, that he just decided that, you know, his life was going to be about becoming that criminal mastermind and and spent decades pursuing it. How important was it for you to get down to the emotional core or, or the root 
of all of this because I mean, like involving the family is, is very interesting new layer to his story as well. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I, he's obviously, you know, he's a, a very complex human being and I think has, has, you know, very different types of relationships with different people in the story. And I think that, you know, this, we're talking about a man who had, you know, close to 50 aliases that were uncovered, you know, he's, he's somebody who, um, was a chameleon in a lot of ways. And I was really just fascinated that the, you know, the person that his mother knew was 180 degrees from the person that the police saw, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think really being able to, to show that in kind of a rounded way, um, you know, it's fascinating to me, something that I, you know, definitely aspired to do, um, but yeah, I mean, I think I think we all do that to some capacity, but I think just his ability to be so many different people simultaneously is is uh, yeah, really kind of at the core of a lot of these stories. Yeah, well, it makes for a really, really fascinating and fun documentary. Uh, I really enjoyed it and I can't wait to see what everyone says about it. <laughs>